Andrea Nakayama. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Andrea Nakayama, and I'm a functional nutritionist and educator. If you don't know what a functional nutritionist is, don't worry. You will by the end of our time together tonight. This evening, I'd like to share with you my thoughts on three critical Bs, biochemistry, the brain, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. First, let me share with you a fairy tale. It's an urban fairy tale. In fact, it takes place right here in this city of San Francisco. It's about a girl in her mid-20s, and she's an artist. Her dream is to live her art, to embody it. She doesn't exactly know what that means yet, but she knows that she wants her mission to be connected to something larger than herself. In fact, this girl is all about making connections. To make a living in San Francisco as an artist, she takes a job in a coffee shop, slugging espresso shot after shot, day after day, just to make the ends meet. And there she meets him. She connects with her soulmate. He, too, is working in the coffee shop, and he has an unusual name. His name is Isamu. I-S-A-M-U. The girl and Isamu spend more and more time together outside of work, and one night, crossing a busy street on the way to a movie theater, he puts his hand in the curve of her back, and she feels connected, chemical. This goes on for nine months, walks, talks, more moments of these pivotal connections until he finally kisses her. Electricity. The girl and Isamu leave the coffee shop. They get jobs that have more meaning to them. They move in together and they get married. Two years later, everything changes. Not their love. They're still wildly in love with each other, still the perfect match. In fact, They've made a baby, or at least an embryo. The girl is pregnant, but there's something growing inside of him as well. It's a tumor, and it's in his brain. It's called a glioblastoma multiforme. It's a fancy name for a badass tumor, the worst. When she's just seven weeks pregnant, he's given six months to live. He lives two and a half years. He lives to see their baby born and to see their son take his first walk, his first steps, to say his first words and to eat his first bites of seaweed. <laughs> he fights not just for his life, but the life that he and the girl created together. This man, Isamu, was my husband, and he died 10 years ago. And so, of course, that girl is me. As is true for many of us who are faced with illness this intimately, Isamu's diagnosis, his disease, and his death were awakenings for me. There's a term I heard once, I read it in a magazine, actually, and in that magazine there was an article about Matthew Swafford, the paraplegic yogi. And I love this term because it gave me permission, and I want to share it with you tonight. That term is post-traumatic growth. Who among us experiences post-traumatic growth versus post-traumatic stress, and why? 
Isamu's illness was also like nutritional and physiological boot camp for me. I wanted to understand the mechanisms that feed cancer growth. I wanted to understand the functionings of the nervous system. And I wanted to know what the hell this thing was in his brain called a blood-brain barrier that was keeping the medicine from getting to the tumor. I mean, fuck the odds, damn the statistics, this was my man, my match, and I was going to do whatever I could to keep him alive. And I did. If only I knew then what I know now, I could have done so much more. I look back at the journals we kept, we called them the Isamu books, and I think, damn, girlfriend, you were doing a good job. But I didn't know then what I know now, now that I've studied the scientists, sciences and I've had the opportunity to work with hundreds of people around the world on their health and nutrition during their healing journeys. What I know now that I didn't know then was that the key to nutritional healing has two parts. There's the key, which is the food we eat, and there's the lock, which is our physiology. And it's the biochemistry between the two that truly allows for a deeper level of healing. This is where food is medicine. I always like to say that we are not actually what we eat. You are not what you eat. You are what your body can do with what you eat. And let me give you an example of this. Let's talk about the brain. So the brain has two kinds of cells in it. There are glial cells and there are neurons. And the glial cells pack around the neurons. They protect them. They provide food and nutrition for those neurons. The glial cells are also the cells that develop cancers, like gliomas and glioblastoma multiformes. The neurons are these crazy-looking cells. They've got things sprouting out all over them, and they have these long arms called, these, called an axon. Every neuron has one axon. And the purpose of this axon is transmission. It does the telling for the rest of the body. And on this axon, there's something that happens, electricity. And that electricity is an action potential. So let's look at this in practical terms. If we take someone who has multiple sclerosis, what's happening is that their immune system is attacking the axon in the neuron in their nervous system. So what can we do for that person? There's a whole host of things we can do nutritionally to help somebody with multiple sclerosis. We can certainly clean up their diet, remove the sugars, and that's the key. But if we look at the lock, if we come over and look at the lock and understand that it's the immune system that's attacking this part of the body, then what do we do to bring the immune system into balance? We use the appropriate antioxidants for that person, and we start to feed and nourish that part of the body which is made primarily of fats with the right fats. And this is where Buffy the Vampire Slayer comes in. Because Buffy didn't just have a stake to kill vampires. That show wouldn't have lasted seven seasons. <laughs> and that stake would have just been the key. Buffy has to understand the weakness of every demon she's fighting. And that's how she takes them down. I used to say that I love Buffy for three particular reasons. She has no fear. She walks into any situation and kicks ass, and she's in love with a dead man. She's my girl. <laughs> Buffy is fighting beasts, and she learns by fighting one demon at a time. But gradually, the forces of evil grow larger and larger and bigger, and Buffy needs to understand, why did these demons come here? What do they want? And how do I take them down? 
We can liken the demons in the Buffy sphere to the increasing rates of illness and disease that we're facing in our country today. Cancer, heart disease, diabetes. And we can liken the well-intentioned agents in Buffy who are also fighting these demons to our general health care system today. They mean well, really they do, but they're missing the point. I have a favorite mentor in functional medicine, and she likes to say you can have two women come into your office. Let's say they are both 44 years old, they're the same height, the same weight, and they have the same diagnosis of ovarian cancer. When we look at these two women, they look the same on paper. But when we look at this woman over here and we take a more functional lens, so we're looking at their labs and their health histories and their lifestyles, we can see that this woman has hormones that have gone completely awry. This woman over here, her, horm her hormones look fine. They look absolutely fine. It's her inflammatory markers that are off the charts. So should these two women be treated the same way? No, they should not. I'm losing my point, but it will come back to me. What we need to do is gain that intimacy with the evil forces, just like Buffy did, right? That's where we need to go. We need to understand how to understand where they came from, why they came, and what to do about them. The pivotal moment for me of understanding this connection between the key and the lock came early on, several years after Isamu died, in my beginning trainings of science and nutrition. It was biology class number one, the first of many. And I was sitting up in bed with textbooks and class notes and my computer, and there it was between the lines, an aha in the negative space of the page. There I could see the importance of the physiology, the undeniable importance of the physiology in healing the entire body's system. My obsession shifted seamlessly from food and cooking and eating healthfully to this passion for the puzzle of biology and biochemistry and asking the critical question, why? Not why me or why Isamu, but why is this happening in the body and what can we do about it? Exploring this critical question of why is how I believe we can change the face of healthcare. I started this exploration on myself, practicing food as medicine on my own body, looking at a body that's been under a tremendous amount of duress. I mean, Think about it. Pregnancy presents its own host of hormonal havoc, and I had a triple shot of stress thrown into the picture. So I began to look at the critical connections between a healthy gut and a healthy brain, between blood sugar balance and hormone balance, and between the influences of internal inflammation and immunity, or as had become the case for me, autoimmunity. My body was attacking itself. It wasn't attacking the axons and the neurons of my nervous system. Instead, my body was attacking my thyroid. And I could ask, why didn't anybody tell me this stuff? Instead, I ask, who can I tell? In nutrition, we're so focused on food and dietary theories and telling people what to eat that we're missing the critical part, the importance of the physiology in this component of activating healing. And this has become my mission. Who can I tell?
I'm like one of those axons filled with electricity, ready to share, transmit the information. Who can I tell about this critical connection between the food and the physiology, the key and the lock? I'll tell anyone who listen. I'll tell you, if you'll listen, how to connect the symptoms happening in your body and what's going into your body. It's not just the food, it's the physiology. It's your physiology. There's no prescription here. It's a process about discovering what's right for you and your body. And forgetting that can make us feel like our most... Our biggest efforts are failing us. So how do we change that? How do we educate and inspire not just each other, but the healthcare system in general to make this shift so that more people can experience healing? This is where you come in. Thank you. <laughs> This is where you come in. This is where you do the telling. If you're a health coach or nutritionist, then understanding the whys elevates your status. It enables you to speak to the medical professionals with more acuity. acuity. It is the key tool in your toolbox that you can pull out whenever you're feeling stuck with a client. If you don't practice health or medicine in any way, practice on yourself. The way that you tell is with your glowing skin, your dream body, your ability to hold symptoms at bay. And then when they ask you, how did you do it? You tell. If there's one thing that you remember from our time together tonight, I want you to remember this. You have a voice that can change the face of healthcare that is much more powerful than your vote. It's understanding the whys and the hows of your very own body. But before I leave you tonight, I need to bring Buffy back. <laughs> I saw a steak on the way to Rainbow, and I almost picked it up today. <laughs> Buffy was my guilty pleasure many years ago, my late-night guilty pleasure, and I would stay up at night watching Buffy, and it was at this time that I fell in love with her, and she became my hero. But I recently watched the entire series again, this time with my son, Gilbert, who's now 11. And I found something really inspiring this second time. It was in the final episode of the final season. And what happens is that Buffy realizes she can't do it alone. What Buffy realizes is that she needs to ignite the powers of every single potential slayer in order to fight the biggest forces of evil. This is my purpose. I want you to understand the power of the key and the lock so that you can heal both your own body and perhaps many more around you because this is how we change the face of healthcare. Thank you. 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 Thank you.